Hello, I'm Kathy Rowan. I'm a communication, emerita communication professor at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. I'm proud to moderate this scientific session, Communicating the Future, an agenda for engaging the public with basic science. This session explores evidence-based directions in scholarship, training, and practice to advance the impact of public engagement with basic science. Thank you for joining us. The presentation is the second of three pre-recorded videos focused on a speaker's material before all the panelists come together in February during live discussion. In this video, Brooke Smith discusses the Kavli Foundation's views about the importance of funding basic science, some views about what the difference is between basic science and other forms, and what public engagement about basic science involves. Later on in this video, Brooke and I have a brief dialogue to delve deeper into the material she presents. Welcome, Brooke. Thank you, Kathy. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining and taking the time to watch this before we see you all together in the middle of February. Um, I am going to talk a little bit about this, this question. The title of, of this talk is, Is Basic Science Engagement Unique? Um, I'm going to kind of unpack what that means and why we're asking these questions to think about what a future um, agenda might be for exploring the relationship between basic science and the public and what effective engagement might be. Um, you'll hear from other folks in this session. Uh, our work here is really grounded in the efforts of the SIPEP program, the Science Public Engagement Partnership, which is a unique collaboration between the Kavli Foundation and the Department of Energy. And I'll, I'll share a little bit about that here too. So the Kavli Foundation, where I work, our mission is advancing science for the benefit of humanity. Uh, the majority of what we do is to fund basic research. Uh, we also have a program in what we call Science in Society, which looks at the um, interface of science and the public. Uh, we've been uh, um, around for 20 years. We celebrated our 20th anniversary last year. And for, for those 20 years, the majority of what we have been doing is really focusing on the funding of the science itself, largely through our Kavli Institutes um, that are focused on nanoscience, astrophysics, and neuroscience, as well as some theoretical physics. So we've really been grounded in that idea of um, supporting basic science, the curiosity driven research. Uh, and I joined the foundation a couple of years ago, about three years ago, given our mission of advancing science to benefit humanity, really spending a little bit more time thinking about what that humanity piece looks like and recognizing that science doesn't happen in a vacuum. It's part of our social construct, it's part of our social context, um, and that humanity is part of that. And so we've been thinking a lot about that relationship between science and the public. Um, so that brought us to this partnership with the Department of Energy. Obviously, the Kavli Foundation and the DOE both invest in and care about basic science quite a bit. Um, and as we think about the relationship then between basic science and the public, and my colleague um, Rick Borschelt from the Department of Energy is giving another talk in this session, has spent his career supporting scientists and um, the science and communicating it and connecting it with the public. And our two um, organizations, as well as Rick and I's individuals, spent some time a couple of years ago really recognizing this conspicuous gap that public engagement with basic science specifically is rarely the focus of conversations about the public's relationship with science. Um, in my career, I spent a lot of time at meetings and conferences about science communication and uh, engagement with science. And while we talk uh, at a high level sometimes about science, often the examples we get into uh, about people's relationship with science tend to be more about the applied sciences. Um, and it's just left us wondering, are things different for basic science? Is basic science different than applied? Uh, maybe it's not, but we haven't really asked those questions or dug into it to, to think about what might be different about people's relationship with uh, basic science and, the, and how they engage with that. So we set out to ask these questions. What about basic science engagement is unique? If anything, is it different than applied science engagement? I just wanna spend a minute kind of unpacking this question. What do we mean by basic science? What do we mean by engagement as we think about this? 
So for us here at the Cavalry Foundation, we really think about basic science as curiosity-driven research, discovery science. It has a lot of different names. Um, our founder, Fred Cavalry, was very invested in this to make sure that there was basic research that was work at the very edge, the very border of knowledge, that we're moving that border forward, that we're under understanding how things work, how we work, how the universe works, um, how things are, are connected. So that, that the fundamental research that happens with that, oftentimes one of the things I've said about a definition for basic science is it's things that are not applied science, recognizing that there is um, a continuum and when something becomes curiosity driven versus use inspired versus applied becomes quite fuzzy um, and that's okay. I'm not trying to draw a black and white line here, but recognizing that a lot of the research that uh, the public is familiar with or that we talk about in science communication and engagement is very clearly on the applied end of the spe spectrum. Um, it might be around vaccines or implications of climate change. Um, and so it's, it's, it's clear that um, we're talking about the very applied things often, but what about the other end of the spectrum or in some of the other um, um, buckets in the quadrant of how we think about the kind of science being done? And then what do we mean about, what do we mean when we talk about engagement? What does engagement mean? Uh, as many of you who work in science communication or public engagement probably have spent some time thinking about is this idea around engagement that is grounded in two-way mutual learning that scientists in various publics are sharing, are listening, that there's two-way learning happening between folks. Um, it's not just about sharing facts out into the world. It's not just about a press release, um, but how, how is mutual learning happening? Um, it's interesting because there this is a you know a very uh, hot topic these days um, in science communication and engagement that you know broadcasting doesn't work, engagement is better. Um, but under what circumstances and given, you know, what goals do you have that might be different? But nonetheless, um, for basic science, you know, really think about what, you know, whether or not engagement is the right tactic to use, given your goal is um, another is, is a question that we'll be exploring. But even when engagement then might be the right, right tactic, what does engagement for basic fundamental science look like? Um, how do we evaluate that? Um, what does that mean? Uh, we did some landscaping. My colleague Rick talks about this, I believe, in his talk that looked at the literature around science in science communication journals, um, public understanding of science journals around um, what was published about engagement as it relates to basic science. And turns out, you know, not much. Um, there's really uh, not much of anything about basic science. And so that was interesting to us. Like maybe we really haven't asked these questions and dug into it. Um, we had at um, SciPEP last year in 2021, we convened a conference to discuss some of these ideas and think about some of these things. And, you know, one of the things that I heard at that conference that I wanted to share back from our colleague, Chris Volpe, who's at Science Counts, this, this slide comes from them, it's, it's on their website, um, is he shared some interesting polling and um, focus group information that he did with the Alda Center around this idea of um, uh, being motivated by process versus being motivated by payoff, um, where he talks about how scientists often use words to describe their work um, that may be, you know, kind of uh, subtly different than how the public talks about things. Um, that when scientists talk about how excited they are about their, like, joint excitement about their science, it's often grounded in the rewards of the process of science, of doing science and what that looks like. Um, whereas he shared that one of the elements of science that resonates with various publics is this idea of hope, the hope that science provides, that that, that term really means a lot to folks. But with that also comes this idea that there's a payoff, that it's about like publics are invested in the payoff of science. Um, and what's interesting about this to me is just thinking about the contradiction sometimes of like a scientist is motivated in sharing their process, but the public is motivated in hearing about the payout. What does that mean? 
And then if we think about that as it relates to basic science, um, you know, basic science is kind of, uh, when you think about the big process of science, it's so early on sometimes in the pipeline, you don't know what it's going to lead to. You don't know what it's going to, um, uh, what technology or application it leads to. I hear all the time from basic scientists that I work with, you know, they're not in it because they want to develop the next technology on X. They're in it because they want to understand how something works. They're driven by the curiosity of understanding that. And so it's led us kind of thinking, um, you know, our, our, our basic scientists um, even more in this process minded camp. And if they are, are we not connecting with the payoff minded camp that, pub that various publics are in? And how do we reconcile that? Do we need to find ways to connect that process minded work where scientists are with the public? Or do basic scientists need to think more about payoffs, um, which maybe they don't want to because that's not why they're doing the science. Um, and so these are some of the questions that we want to ask and, and think more deeply about so that scientists who, basic scientists who are interested in communicating and engaging can really think about how to do it in ways that connect meaningfully to the public, but are also really authentic to them as scientists and what their motivations are. Um, one of the other things that we've talked about and we've thought about in terms of um, basic science engagement is whether or not we are reaching basic science, basic scientists in the different trainings, um, professional development sessions that um, are out there and are being offered to scientists who do want to engage or communicate with the public. Um, and again, this is grounded in this idea of a lot of the training and work that's done in helping scientists with communications or engagement is working with them to think about why is your science relevant to someone? And let's talk about the relevance to the audience. And of course that makes sense. But again, as a basic scientist, um, your relevance might not be seen for a while. And is it your job as a basic scientist to then make the case for basic science or to talk about your research, in which case you're doing yourself a disservice by, uh, by um, constraining it to a eventual application when it's when your science is so much more than that eventual application. And so are we really bringing the right tools to basic scientists and communications training to meet them where they are and to um, grapple with the, um, the uh, curiosity driven approaches they have and how that reconciles with where the public um, might be. Um, and we also have um, identified and really dug into, and this is a theme through all of all of our questions, but what are the responsibilities of basic science communicators to address um, issues of justice, equity, and inclusion in science? And one of the things that we keep coming back to and want to unpack a bit more, um, we've been talking a lot about issues of equity and justice in science overall. Are they different or maybe even stronger or more present in basic science than they might be in applied science, given who has access to doing basic science, um, who's um, part of the basic science enterprise. And so while this is a very important topic that's being talked about across science engagement and science communication overall, we would really like to think about and understand, is it special, more different, more of an issue in basic science than it might be in applied science? Um, and then lastly, one of the things that um, we've really uncovered is what the meaningful pathways might be to connecting the social science research about what we understand about people's relationships with science with the practice that's happening to connect people to science and basic science. Um, this one's really interesting because, again, this is an area that in science communication and public engagement comes up over and over again. We have all of this scholarship over here. The practice is being done over here. Are the two working with each other? Are they learning from each other? Are they co-developing? Um, given that we learned, and I said this early on, that the uh, landscape of scholarship that is specifically about basic science is so thin, um, does this make it even more of a problem for basic scientists looking to engage? Are basic scientists who do want to connect with or, and professionals that are doing the communication engagement that do want to connect with the scholarship is what's available to them about applied science are so broad that it might not actually be applicable to what they're doing. And so we really wanted to take a, a deep look at um, what is the base of knowledge. And even if we had one, is it being connected to the practice? And as we build one, um, and as we and we hope a bigger one will be built, a bigger understanding, how can we build it in a way 
that does connect to the practice of scientists and professionals earlier on so we can address some of these things that we've seen happen. Um, so with all of this, you know, we've seen um, through our convenings and our discussions that um, we've been thinking about whether or not basic science is unique. We've seen a lot of really exciting bright spots um, around uh, asking these questions and thinking about it. First of all, we're seeing a lot of willingness from scientists um, to engage, especially early career scientists. And so like a lot of appetite to have these conversations and think about it. Um, there is more data and scholarship about public engagement with science overall. Um, and so hopefully that presents more opportunities to dig into um, what that might mean for basic science. We're seeing a lot more connections and a lot more programs, um, a lot of places where uh, communication and engagement professionals are meeting to talk about these things, where scientists are meeting to talk about what um, engagement and communications might mean in their career. So we're really excited at SciPEP to um, join those conversations and uh, make sure that there's a place for conversations about whether or not that's different for basic scientists. Um, so we really want to capitalize on the really great momentum that's out there and all the networks and associations are there to um, you know, make space for conversations about basic science. Uh, and like I've covered here, um, we've seen in some of our preliminary um, views of looking at whether or not basic science is unique or different um, than um, science overall or applied science, um, some common field-wide challenges. Uh, and I've talked about a few of these, the need to connect scholarship and practice, thinking about diversity, inclusivity, and equity in engagement, um, but also some of these uh, kind of tried and true challenges we've seen in, in science communication, uh, the desire to move from lecturing about something to something that's more of a listening engagement mode. Um, we've heard as we started to explore some of these things, um, basic scientists who are interested in doing communication engagement, sharing, as we often hear, I really wanna do this work, but it's not recognized, it's not incentivized, it's not valued in my career. That's not specific to only basic scientists, but we're hearing that they're, they're feeling that struggle as well. Um, and the need to support the professional capabilities that exist, those who are experts in communication, those who are practitioners in it, experts in engagement, scholars in engagement and communication, um, to really support those professions and um, make sure that there's uh, collaboration amongst the professionals, the scientists, the scholars to really do, do this work well. Um, so for SIPEP, as we look ahead, um, I've kind of outlined here, you know, why we're asking these questions, why SIPEP even exists, um, why we see that there might be some potential uniqueness um, characteristics of basic science, and we'll dig into those more. And so we as SIPEP are really anxious to explore this. So over the next couple of years, we plan to um, commission a few landscape studies to better understand some things that um, we'd like to get deeper into have some workshops with all of you who are passionate about this or leading thinking in this to connect people to think more deeply about this um, and put together some research agendas that might um, spark more research in this area um, and hopefully build our knowledge, build our capacity and build our community and networks around this. Um, so that's it for uh, this specific talk, and I know that there are a few others, but hopefully this is building a foundation for some of the questions we're asking and where, where we might go. I know Sarah Yo is going to dig more into some of the specific research questions that have emerged from this, so I encourage you to watch that. And thank you. And Kathy, I look forward to your questions or great ideas about this. Thank, thank you, Brooke. I, I, you always get me thinking about this topic. It's incredibly interesting. So, well, let's dive into some of the ideas that you've been exploring. Um, I remember you're telling me that you personally have coached and talked, in fact, I think yeah. you said that, uh, with scientists who are engaged in basic science. And can you think about us, like a single example, like mm -hmm. what, you know, some human was studying X mm -hmm. and, yeah. they said, and they were frustrated. Can you yeah. tell that story just a little yeah. bit? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, so um, I, I mentioned this or spoke about this really briefly um, earlier, but um, yeah, I spent some time before coming to the Cavley Foundation um, at a great organization called Compass, which supports mm -hmm. scientists to do um, uh, uh, communications training for them to be more effective communicators and connect yeah. scientists to very discourse. Um, that organization works 
with scientists who study things related to the environment. So it tends to be quite applied. Um, and one of the trainings that I was leading, uh, while had a lot of the environment science and applied, they opened it up to a few other folks. And I will never forget this. There was a theoretical physicist um, in that training. And one of the things that we workshop through is really um, challenging scientists to think through why is your science relevant? so that you can take that relevance to connect to different audiences. Not, not why does it matter to you? Why does it matter to other people? And this particular scientist really struggled with that because they felt like uh, it's relevant because it's basic science. <laughs> um, and then therefore, is it their job to explain why basic science is relevant? And they felt like that doesn't feel like my job. It feels like the job of the you know, of the NSF, of the DOE, of the funding agency who does it, the fact that we're investing in it as a country makes it relevant. Um, so why do I need to talk about why basic science is relevant? But if you want me to make this particular piece of science relevant, then I'm going to end up um, diluting it or reducing it down to a single thing that it may or may not be relevant to, which feels like spin. <laughs> and I don't want to be spinning what I'm about. It's about this thing. And so it really left me in that experience um, feeling like some of the structures and, and, and tools we're using to help scientists communicate don't work for um, where basic, some basic scientists might personally be in terms of, you know, we also say in communications, bring your authentic self to your communications. And when your authentic self is sort of challenging, like, but I don't want to be the voice for why basic science matters, nor do I want to predict some future application just to make this work. It doesn't feel authentic. And reconciling those communication mantras of be authentic, but also be very relevant to your neighbor sometimes can be at odds. Um, and I think that we need to explore that more and think about then what that means for effective engagement. That, that's so helpful. That's a very interesting, I think there, I think I'm looking forward to the discussion of our, of this, of your talk with uh, the whole group when we come together in February 20th, because I think a lot of people would, would have some interesting things to say about that tension. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, I want to go in so many ways, but mm -hmm. well, well, let me stick with that for a moment. Mm -hmm. So one approach to science communication training would come back to that individual you were working with mm -hmm. and encourage that person to work on warmth. They, yeah. they call it warmth, you know, and you know this better than I, but I'll just yeah. lay it out. Um, that John Besley, our colleague John Besley and mm -hmm. his colleagues have been looking at do you know is your job when you're communicating with someone to engage to show them that you care about them that that mm -hmm. is a fundamental goal and you care about this exciting basic science and let me just mm -hmm. give you one super quick story of somebody who i think does this well there's a retired scientist now at george mason university who studies storms on the sun mm -hmm. um, and uh he could have have told uh the the people at Mason he was talking to who were undergraduates in my class about the extremely complicated mathematical models he was creating to help us yeah. understand storms on the sun. But the way he came into a group of undergraduates was by doing this. He, he showed us some videos of storms on the sun and he started his talk with, wow, you want to see some really cool pictures? And we really didn't quite know what we were looking right. at whatever but essentially what he was doing was saying i'm gonna connect by by sharing my my visceral like he literally is very excited yeah. about these terms on the sun so i guess my question is is what are your thoughts about warmth do mm -hmm. you think that basic scientist you were talking to would like yeah. that direction or do yeah. you we got a ways to go or that's a research question <laughs> yeah. that's the agenda here yeah, this is a great, a great question, a great thing to talk about. Um, I mean, some of my thoughts about this uh, that I'd love to discuss with folks. Uh, yes, warmth, but also, you know, being, being yourself and being like humanizing the work that you do is so important. Um, we shouldn't lose that. And we should probably think about how can we build that up even more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Brooke. There's so much more to talk about no. here. Um, so we'll just say thank you again for your presentation. And I'd like to remind the audience that this is one of three spotlight videos 
focusing before uh, our discussion presentation when the whole group comes together in February for the Communicating the Future, an agenda for engaging the public with basic science. This session occurs at uh, noon to 1245 on Sunday, February 20th. Uh, so you can refer to your uh, AAAS annual meeting website to triple check that session time and date. Mm -hmm. Again, thank you, Brooke, for your presentation and thank you audience for watching this video. We look forward to talking to you and hearing your ideas on this important topic later in February. Mm -hmm.